While Rwanda contributes about 0.003% to global greenhouse gas emissions, it is quite vulnerable to the consequences of climate change. The country has thus taken steps to transition to a sustainable economy. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, we focus on Rwanda's efforts to attract green financing as it strives to attain its target of building a carbon-neutral and climate-resilient economy by 2050. I'm your host, Tessie Carvin. Rwanda has set an ambitious climate action agenda to build the country's resilience and foster green growth. To achieve these goals, the country needs investments totaling 11 billion US dollars. The Kigali International Finance Center recently launched the Sustainable Finance Roadmap, an instrument that is meant to help Rwanda become a leading pan-African hub for local, regional and international sustainable finance. This roadmap for Chigali International Financial Center is very important because it looks at three pillars. One, how do we attract sustainable finance focused investors? How do we put in place the infrastructure required to attract that? And that speaks to issues around taxonomy. And three, how do we build skills and competences around sustainable finance or ESG investing. So it's to be able to attract the investments, one, you need to have the infrastructure in place, you need to have the skills, and then you need to attract the capital. So it speaks to those three key pillars. The Sustainable Finance Roadmap contains three strategic objectives that will help address existing gaps around green investing in Rwanda. L limited skills of people, who have the knowledge, the experience around ESG investing across different subsectors of our financial sector, be it banking, be it insurance, be it capital markets, we see that gap. So it's a gap that we need to respond to. Two, it's around a focus around ESG investing, meaning how do we green banking lending? How do we green our stock market? How do we green other investment structures such as funds that are being used? So those, th th those are the two immediate gaps that we see within our financial sector and that we want to respond to. To be able to attract green financing, an enabling environment needs to be created. Let's, let's take the most recent example. African Development Bank has set up a pharmaceutical foundation in Rwanda. That has happened, so when now we talk about financial instruments, that has happened, one, because we have a foundations law. So to be able to set up that foundation, you need to have a legal instrument that enables you to be able to do that. Two, when you talk about investment instruments, we have a tax regime that defines how a foundation is going to be taxed. So those, that, that, that's what we, we mean when we're saying we need to create investment structures, investment instruments, and an enabling environment to attract sustainable finance-focused investors. That's one example. Number two, as you recall, there was a bond that was listed on the Rwanda Stock Exchange. And this bond was about raising funds to be able to invest into solar power generation. So how do we continue to see more of these happen? There are initial discussions of an issuance of a green bond. Again, these are the other examples of, of financial instruments that we are looking to see. Established, domiciled, in Rwanda through Chigali International Financial Center. With the right environment in place, 
How are investors tapping into the available opportunities? I think there's so many new and innovative um, structures that are being developed, you know, in, in the debt side, on the equity side, different ways of blending capital to a chain objectives. Um, lots of innovation happening now around carbon pricing, around the pricing of externalities to carbon, um, different social benefits or other environmental benefits. All of that is going to take a lot of financial structuring and a lot of innovation to get to get the most opportunity we can. We're seeing some really neat things already. I'm seeing it in businesses that we're working with. Um, and I think that's going to accelerate. And having a home and a space in Africa that's doing that, thinking about African businesses, do, thinking about the opportunities that are in front of us, I think is going to be crucial for us really maximizing the opportunity for the continent. One would ask, is Rwanda ready to attract this type of capital? I've always been impressed that in Rwanda people come together, we see an objective, and the public-private social sectors collaborate and, and work to attain that objective. Um, we've been doing the same around the International Financial Center for several years now. It's continuing to gain momentum. Um, it has always been in the strategy for KFC to focus on green investing. This is an important milestone in that path. And I'm, you know, even if you just look in the room today, you've got banks, you've got the head of heads of um, the the Environmental Management Authority, you've got the Green Climate Fund, you've got representatives of min the Ministry of Finance and um, and and the International Financial center they're there right and there's private sector folks and there's donors in the room and everyone is working together so yeah I think I think Kigali is gonna do it I think Rwanda is gonna do it with Rwanda in need of 11 billion dollars in investments to achieve its green growth targets the country is maximizing on every available opportunity at the recent UN climate change conference COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh Egypt Rwanda launched a $100 million facility to boost private sector access to green finance. We've just launched Ireme Invest, uh, which is a private sector facility that has two main objectives. One, we want to be able to attract and unlock uh, private uh, investments. Two, be able to provide financial instruments that can support our private sector on the ground. Uh, again, back to the, the key concern that we have currently, is that if we are to address the climate change issue, we do need to mobilize greater levels of finance. And I don't believe that we can do that by simply working with traditional um, you know, finance. It's really important that uh, we come up with instruments uh, that can blend both public and private uh, investments. With initial capitalization of more than 100 million US dollars, Ireme Invest is tailored to meet the unique needs of Rwanda's private sector. So uh, our goal obviously is to support our private sector, but also focusing on different, um, different players across the business life cycle. Uh, from what we've seen, uh, we conducted a market assessment to really understand what are the gaps of the private sector. So one, what, what, what this revealed is that you can have one instrument that really fits uh, everybody. So we've been able to create um, products that can support the private sector all the way from ideation to incubation to then acceleration. So we'll be providing grants and reimbursable grants for early stage business uh, businesses. And then uh, on the credit side facility, we'll, have, uh, we'll, be offering, uh, we'll be offering loans, subsidized loans, as well as guarantees to really back, uh, back up the, 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 these investments. With this push to build a green economy, private banks will play a pivotal role in financing the transition to a low-carbon sustainable future. How are they performing in this regard? Uh, we first need to learn and to be able to measure uh, what climate risk we have in our portfolios. This is something that uh, most banks uh, locally don't know yet. So after we've measured, then we need to see how we mitigate those risks with uh, maybe new financial instruments, I think that even regulators are going to come and tell us to take some capital charge for climate risk because this is a real risk. Today we are able to measure our credit risk, our liquidity risk, but if you ask me to measure my climate risk, you know, I don't know. So I think this, uh, acti these activities are going to help us to understand uh, what we are sitting on uh, as risks and also going forward for new projects coming in all sectors, in manufacturing, in agriculture, we need to make sure we integrate um, climate change uh, in, in our decision making, in our pricing, 
and also to be able to attract um, uh, funding uh, for these green projects. And while most banks in Rwanda are increasingly seeing the importance of ESG reporting, many of them still have a long way to go as far as implementation is concerned. So, so today we are trying, of course we are doing a, a lot of reporting and trying, but in terms of the way we run our business, to be 100% honest, uh, when a client comes to us, we won't ask him, you know, what's the ESG risk uh, in your project. Only for large um, projects, especially in manufacturing, we request people to get this environmental impact, impact assessment. But we don't have expertise within the bank to actually read these reports and understand and price uh, our products in line with the, the, the risks that are um, mentioned in these reports. So I think it's going to be a journey for us to learn and, and for us to be able to integrate uh, uh, all these new risks uh, that are evolving uh, into our decision making. Well, becoming a carbon neutral economy is multidimensional and requires thorough changes. Rwanda has taken a climate action oriented path giving it the opportunity to leapfrog into a new economy and deliver on both its development as well as climate goals. That's all we had for this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. I've been your host, Tessie Carvin. Until next time, bye for now.